Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, this is Leah Hines. I'm the executive director of the Charleston Conference. Welcome to our webinar, Tips and Tricks for Attending the Conference. We're glad you're here with us today. Uh, whether you're a first time attendee or you've, you've been before, but it's been a few years, or you just want to see what all the cool kids are doing in Charleston, um, glad you're here to, to hear from us about um, our tips and tricks and things that have been submitted by other attendees. Um, so let me introduce our speakers for today or let them introduce themselves. They're all here um, and they will introduce themselves in the order that we're speaking. So first up, uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I memorized the order. Um, hi, I'm Kate Hill. I am the electronic resources librarian at University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And this is my, I guess I'm going now to my fourth Charleston conference. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth Bernhardt. I'm the program chair for the Charleston Conference, and I do not remember how many years I've been going <laughs> here. So, I think I've been chair of the program committee since 2005, so it's been a while. <laughs> I'm Heather Staines. I'm the director of partnerships for Hypothesis, and I was trying to figure out, I either started in 2006 or 2007, so I'm up there uh, in the low teens now. Mm -hmm. I um, am Chris Ferguson. I'm the Director of Technical Services at Murray State University. And my first year at the Charleston Conference was in 2003. So I'm at uh, year 14 now. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, thank you to our speakers for uh, agreeing to, to participate. Um, so now let's move into, uh, now that we've introduced ourselves, let's uh, ask you guys to introduce yourselves. So there should be an attendee chat box on your screen. Um, if you could just type in there and say hello, say where you're from, um, and introduce yourself that way. So we'll, while people are doing that um, in the chat box, I've also got a couple of polls. Um, let's see here. So the chat box is to say hi, where you're from, and then here's a poll that says, what type of attendee are you? Are you a librarian, a publisher, a vendor, consultant, other? Um, let us know who you are, where you're from. Let's see here. Oh, wow. Lots of <laughs> librarians. <laughs> Big surprise. I see uh, there's a fair number of um, vendors here, though. I saw some Taylor and Francis, some Elsevier, too. Yep. yep. Stanford, University of Notre Dame. Let's see here. East Consortium. Lots of different ones. Okay. Great. Quebec. All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move on to our second poll. Is this your first time attending the Charleston Library Conference? Let's see here if I can switch. Hold on a minute. Technical difficulties. Close this one. Now, second poll. Is this your first time attending? Let us know. See how many people we have here. Ah, 91, 90%. There's a few that have been here before. That's great. Yep. We're glad you're here with us. <laughs> Never first time attendees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the option, not sure, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been here before? Maybe. I've been to Charleston, but I don't know if it was for a conference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice mix. Well, thank you guys for introducing yourselves, letting us know a little bit more about you. Um, so let's get into the presentation here. So when you arrive in Charleston, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is head to the Francis Marion Hotel. It is located at 387 King Street. If you've never been, really nice downtown area, very walkable, uh, right across from a green park area. Um, but once you're there, you're in the lobby, um, the Francis Marion lobby. There's uh, the little picture there. You can see there's some stairs leading up on one side of the lobby. That's where our registration check-in desk is located. So you come by there. Um, we've got a huge staff that, that'll be there to greet you. You get a name badge, you'll get an attendee tote bag that's got your program, printed program. It'll have a pen, a notepad, 
uh, post-it notes, you'll get a t-shirt, all sorts of goodies. Um, while you're there, the conference mentor desk in the picture on the slide, it'll be located on the ground floor just to the left of where that entrance is for the registration check-in desk area is. So our um, mentors will be there. You can stop by, just say hello, ask a few questions. Uh, they'll be happy to help you out, point you in the right direction, get you where you need to go. Um, uh, some pro tips. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We've got somebody saying they're not seeing any slides. Anybody else having trouble? Hmm. No picks, just the cover slide. Anybody else having issues? Let me try closing the slides and then reopening them. Ooh, my face is large. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it should be on the arrival check-in slide now. Everybody seeing it? Looks like yes, yeah. I'm seeing okay, the slides. Good. Yes, 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 yay, good. Okay, um, so don't, if you can help it, don't carry a lot of items with you when you arrive, because we're gonna give you a tote bag, we're gonna give you um, some things to, you know, if you've got some smaller items, you can put it in the big tote bag, um, but we, we give you that, so you don't, don't try to be carrying two or three bags around <laughs> all day. Um, so that's just a little tip. Another tip is a lot of times when people check in, they immediately start going through their bags. They want to lighten their load a little bit. Maybe there's some extra brochures or materials in there. Um, it breaks my heart to see all that material sitting on a table in the hotel lobby. We've got recycle bins around. Um, so just be thoughtful about things like that. Um, somebody else is saying slides. And they're still having problems. Um, but yeah, Heather's right. We will be sending out the recording. Um, hopefully the, the slide issue, maybe a browser issue. Um, okay, so the next one I've got here is maps. Uh, hopefully people can see. We've got um, some maps on our website. The I'm gonna turn off my webcam here so that makes the font a little bit larger. The Francis Marion Hotel um, is located on the corner of Calhoun Street and King Street in downtown Charleston. It's right across the street from Marion Square, a large park, a uh, nice green space. Um, direct, kind of diagonally across the park from the Francis Marion Hotel is the Embassy Suites. Uh, that's one of our areas that has concurrent sessions, lively lunches, um, and then the Courtyard Marriott is another area that has concurrent sessions, lively lunches, and it's just a block down Calhoun Street. And then a little further down Calhoun Street on the right is the Charleston Gayard Center. That is going to be where our plenary sessions, uh, the vendor showcase, um, most of the, the large events are going to be held there at the Gayard Center. So there's, as you can see, there's sort of a little diagonal line off of Calhoun Street. It has its own green space out front. There's a little arch and a walkway with some gardens. So it's a very nice walk. It's a safe downtown touristy area. Um, but um, if, you know, the, the need arises, we do have shuttles. That's the next slide. Um, the shuttle loop information is available on our website. We have four color-coded loops that are gonna run between all the conference hotels where we have guest rooms blocked um, and the Gilliard Center and the Francis Marion as well. It's not included on there, but they, they do drop by the Francis Marion. Um, so the red shuttle loop will go constantly between our four meeting venues, the Gilliard Center, the Francis Marion, the Courtyard Marriott, and the Embassy Suites. So you can take the blue, pink, yellow, or green from your hotel in the morning to get downtown or to get to the conference area. And then the red loop will be running constantly um, to get you to the different venues that you need to go to. So this, again, is a lot of font here, a lot of text, rather, um, but it's located on our conference website. There's a link from the mobile app. Um, so you can find your hotel on this list and see which shuttle loop you'll be in. So if you are at, say, the Hampton Inn Patriots Point out in Mount Pleasant, you're going to take the green loop. That's the van, the color that you're going to look for. Um, Holiday Inn Riverview, round Holiday Inn right there is the yellow loop. So you just, um, when you're at your hotel, uh, the vans are going to pick up in the sort of taxi drop-off loading area. So you can ask your hotel front desk, where's the drop-off area? Where's the taxi area? 
um, and look for the vans that have, it'll have a sign on the side that'll have the Charleston Conference, the uh, wrought iron gate logo, and it'll have that color that you're looking for. Um, and our shuttle drivers really are the best. If you are confused or you don't know what loop you need to be on or what color, um, just ask one of the drivers and they will get you where you need to go. Um, they're, they're all um, just real pros. And they, you know, if you're on one color loop that you should have gotten on another one, they'll get you to where you need to go. Um, and the same thing, we'll have shuttles for the reception Wednesday night to go to the aquarium. Um, so if you're at any of the conference meeting venues, you just let them know that you need to get to the aquarium and they'll get you where you need to go. Leah, there's a question about the Marriott Charleston. Is there a Marriott Charleston? I didn't think there, there are were. several Marriott's. There's one, let's see here. There's the courtyard Marriott downtown. There is the courtyard by Marriott waterfront. And I believe there is another Marriott downtown. I'm going to, I'll, I'll research that and I'll get back to you about this Sarah. I see the Marriott Charleston. Um, I believe there's another one waterfront just checking. Let me look into that while uh, Kate is doing her presentation next and I'll come back with an answer for you on that. Okay, Sarah. Um, let's see here. But there's um, the shuttle information and the times. Uh, some, Sabrina just asked about what times they are available. That's also on our website. The, the hotel loops, the blue, pink, yellow, green, they loop in the morning, um, first thing in the morning to sort of mid morning to get you downtown to the conference area and then again in the afternoon and evening from 4 p.m. to like 10 p.m. or something. So um, and then the red loop, the four meeting uh, venues, the Gayard, Francis Marion, Courtyard Marriott, Embassy Suites, that goes all day. It's seven to seven um, or seven to later than that. I can't remember. Seven a.m. till late in the evening, though. <laughs> but those times, again, are located on the website. There's also going to be in the printed program. And, it, and linked from the mobile app. So um, let's see here. There's the shuttle info. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Kate to do her portion of the presentation. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so as I said, I'm Kate. Um, this is uh, my fourth, I, I feel like I'm the, I am the newbie um, who can kind of remember my first, I can remember my first Charleston conference. Um, it was in 2012. And I am going to be talking a little bit about what events I remember as a first timer were really, really useful and have have continued to be useful because as a first timer, um, it can be overwhelming. Uh, Charleston definitely can be overwhelming, not as overwhelming as an ALA annual, but uh, it can be. So I'm just going to cover what I find were are really useful events that you should be paying attention to. And so the first ones I'm going to be talking about are actually, what are all these weird smiley faces? Uh, the, what I actually find the, almost the most valuable at Charleston, the sessions are fantastic, but the networking uh, events are really wonderful. Uh, I have met people who, I just finished writing a book, and I met the two people who I wrote the book with at Charleston. And Charleston does a great job providing times to, that are specifically about networking, and are not, so you're not having to, I guess, just awkwardly strike up conversations in the middle of the Francis Marion lobby, uh, but you can actually have dedicated time to do this when it's expected. So uh, as you know, Charleston is one of the things that, or maybe if you don't know, but one of the things that makes Charleston really unique is its focus on having the entire scholarly life cycle represented, vendors, publishers, librarians, and the fact that we all attend the conference together, vendors are only there um, presenting as exhibiting on Tuesday. And because of our heavy focus on working and including vendors and publishers, there are numerous uh, vendor hosted networking events. Uh, there's the vendor welcome reception on Tuesday, November 7th at 4.30 in the Galliard Center. Um, this is going to be right after, at the tail end of the full exhibit day, which is on Tuesday, also on the at the Galliard Center. And you guys are, are I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like because uh, previously um, the vendor exhibit day has been at the Francis Marion. Oh, the attire, whatever you like, business casual. This picture is of the Galliard Center. This is not the attire that is expected. Um, it's it's not white tie. Um, 
So yeah, they are so dressed up. This is from this is the actual interior <laughs> of the gallery center, and this is like the best picture I could find showing people there. But I think that these people actually, I see Michelle Obama like lurking. So I think this is a, um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the architect took people in fancy clothes and put them down. Um, but it's a really great, it's, I'm really excited to see what the Gallier, Gallier Center is like for this, because this is actually the first time we're having the vendor exhibits in the Gallier Center, which is going to be really great. Um, cause it's going to have a lot more space. It's a lot airier. I think it's going to work really well. Um, so come to that at four 30, you, it's a great chance to meet and talk with vendors. Yes. Um, there is enough time. If you are, someone said, is there enough time to attend it? Yes, there definitely is enough time. I'm in fact presenting at a pre-conference till four and I'm hoping to be there at four 30. Um, there's most pre-conferences should end by around four o'clock. Um, and then there are also vendor sponsored, uh, you probably have gotten, you might've gotten emails about these vendor sponsored happy hours, meals, product demos. These usually happen on Tuesday evening. Uh, these, these invites are sent out by the vendors, so they are not all conference. But if you do get invited to these, I would highly recommend uh, going to them. Uh, I have found them a great way to not, I was originally, initially scared to go to things that vendors invited me to as a librarian worried that I would be just like sitting there under a giant sales pitch for two hours and couldn't escape. But that's not the case. They're just great ways to meet other librarians, get to know your vendors, um, have a really nice time. And I would highly recommend going to those if you do get invited. Um, there's my slide. And then there are the conference sponsored networking sessions. So these are not tied with vendors. Uh, and we provide a lot of those throughout the conference. There are poster sessions and a happy hour networking event. That is going to be at 6 to 6.45 at Francis Marion on Wednesday. So that's, uh, and that is poster sessions I often find anyway are one of the best ways to again network and get to know people because you can talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. You really can engage with an idea and see what you wanna see and skip what you wanna skip. Um, and I don't know if Leah, maybe you could talk a little bit more about the happy hour networking event, um, because I actually am not quite sure what that is. <laughs> I think that's relatively new. You need to unmute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, sorry about that. So yeah, this is something new that we've done in the last couple of years. Um, we have at the same time as the poster sessions and the surrounding areas there, there will be uh, some nice appetizers, uh, a cash bar with beer and um, wine and soft drinks available. Um, there's a room, a meeting room down the hall from the posters um, in the Calhoun room where they're going to have a speed networking session. It's like speed dating for professionals. Uh, you get to meet a lot of people in a short amount of time, trade business cards, um, make contacts. So that's a really nice way to meet people. Um, and it's all surrounding the poster sessions um, and the mezzanine level of the Francis Marion Hotel on Wednesday evening. So you can go do that, meet a few people, and then head to the aquarium for the reception. Thank you, Leah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then it's Leah, um, uh, the all-conference reception, um, to answer Susan and just asked if she could bring family to the all conference reception. I always, my husband always travels with me to Charleston because he really likes Charleston and I always bring him to the conference reception. So, um, I believe that that is okay. Um, Leah, please tell me if I've been wrong for the last four years. Um, but I have always brought him and it's never. No, we've, gotten. we've always said a plus one is okay. Um, yeah. I, my my husband and my kids usually come too, so because they're there with me. But um, usually it's a it's a plus one for the for the reception. So yeah, mm -hmm. so the conference reception is a really uh, Sunday uh, Sunday Wednesday in the South Carolina Aquarium from seven till nine. Um, I go to a lot of conferences for my job, but I would say that this is my favorite conference uh, reception that I go to. Um, it's really well run. There's a biscuit bar and a shrimp and grits bar, which are awesome. And the great thing about it is it's at the aquarium. Uh, and so you can, if you're networking or if you're awkward, kind of like me, if you can be staring at a turtle 
and have a conversation about the turtle. And that's a really good segue into actually talking to another person and not just having to walk up to them. And it's so large that there are a lot of little spaces just to sit and look at things and relax. It's, it's a wonderful time. There's dancing and a band usually if you want to do that. But because it's so large, you can also get away from the music if you want and head up to the second floor and have a nice quiet conversation. So it's really ideal for a lot of different types of activities. And you can often pet stingrays, which is so cool. Um, and then finally, there are diner rounds from Thursday evening. Later on in the uh, slides, I believe we have a link to where you can RSVP for those. You do need to sign up for those beforehand. But what they are, are um, from seven to nine, you uh, basically sign up to go to a restaurant with some of your fellow attendees. And it's another great way to have a small, more private conversation and also enjoy some of the amazing food that Charleston has to offer. Because if this is your first time at Charleston, and we'll talk about this later, the food is incredible. That's what Charleston is known for, and it's rightly known for it. And then finally, brand new this year, there's going to be a first timers reception. So I hope uh, to see you all there. It's from seven to nine on Tuesday um, on the, in the Francis Marion Colonial Ballroom. So that's at that main hotel. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, also going to be there for um, the, uh, they're going to be, it's going to be first, the conference mentors are going to be there. Um, so you can meet up with your mentor and talk to them and ask questions. And it's also just a great way to get to know other first timers, kind of join up, maybe find a conference buddy that you can attend the rest of the, the conference with. Um, and it will also be, I believe, um, the up and comers, uh, up and comers, which is a new award that is being presented um, at, for, at Charleston, um, will also be presented there. And I don't know if there's anything else I should be adding about that, but I believe that is the general, the general gist. And then, so those are the awesome networking events. Um, in terms of session advice, we're gonna be going into a lot of that, but this is what I like to point out as a person who remembers being a first timer. Um, one, it is really okay to try out a session, realize that it's not for you and scoot out. Like there is no shame in that. Um, we, uh, Beth could tell you that I, they go through lots and lots of conference submissions and they try to pick the best ones, but you can't always tell what something's going to be when you accept it. Um, and sometimes titles are misleading. So don't worry about it. If it's something that you just find that you're not interested in, scoot out, go to another session. This is there for you. There are, there are so many sessions happening at the same time. This is there for you to really learn what you want. Also, I recommend to go to listen to some things not in your specialty. Um, don't confine yourself to one area. I'm the elect electronic resources librarian, but Charleston covers so many types of things. I often like to listen to things about collection management and also some it, it, things about updates and scholarly communication because those are topics that I'm interested in and would maybe want to go into at some point, even though they are not directly related to what I am doing on an everyday basis. So I think it's a really great way to kind of get a broader feel for the entire scholarly communication and scholarly publishing life cycle. And finally, you really want to look at the schedule beforehand. This is a tiny little slide that shows everything happening at once. And there's, I remember the first time I was at Charleston and I got the giant booklet and I just kind of stared at it. And I noticed there were like 12 sessions happening at the same time. And I think I spent more time just staring at that booklet in the Francis Marion lobby than actually going to sessions because I was so overwhelmed by what to, you could do. So we're gonna show you how you can, um, online you can actually look at all the sessions, choose ones that you're interested in and kind of help yourself, but help yourself and do that before you arrive at Charleston because otherwise it is very overwhelming. And that is it for me. So I'm gonna pass it on to what I was just talking about, to Beth. Hi. Well, um, just wanted to let you know that there is a schedule online. You can go to this um, website here to look at the scheduler. And the scheduler is has a really cool way that you can load what you like. You can say, I want to go to this and this and this, and it will go onto your um, computer, I mean, or your um, phone, if you, you know. And so it has an app to do that. 
to print it out or to, you know, sync it. It's a um, pretty nifty little guide. Uh, Leah, can I go out to it or would you suggest just I don't think you can click the okay. links that are in the slides. You can share mm -hmm. your screen if you want to go to the website oh. on your end and share. Um, that uh, Somebody just asked, what's the app called? Uh, it is not in the app store. So what you do on your uh, mobile device is go to the website 2017charlestonconference.sked.com and add that to your home screen. There'll be a little uh, pop-up. When you open the website, it'll say add to home screen. Um, and it'll have a link there so that you can access the mobile website um, very easily. And you can sync uh, to your calendar on your phone there. So it's not an app in the app store, but it's a mobile friendly website that you can bookmark and save to your uh, home screen. Great. So that is um, the scheduler and where you can go to look at it. I find that it's really nice to just I'll sync it with my um, on my screen to do things with. And so um, if you have any um, more, if you have any issues with it, uh, you can let us know. But I think everybody so far has found it easy to use. Michael just says, I couldn't find a way to add sessions to my calendar, like a luncheon with the vendor. So you're talking about adding Oh, um, outside set uh, events to your calendar, something that's not on. Okay, yes. I don't know that there's a way to do that to add something from a private event that's not on the schedule to that website. Um, but what you can do is sync it to your calendar. If you use iCal or uh, Google Calendar on your phone, um, you can sync the schedule guide to that calendar and then you can personalize and add. Oh, somebody says it can't be done. I emailed and got the answer. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, yeah, the best way to do that is going to be sync it to your calendar, um, whatever you use. Uh, like I use Google Calendar. So I, you know, you can sync it that way and then you can see your, your private events that are scheduled plus the stuff from the conference schedule. Great. Any more questions about the scheduler before we move on? Okay, dokie. So, so this is um, a quick overview of all the sessions that you can attend at Charleston. So in the mornings, we always have the plenaries and they are, are for everyone to attend. They're in the Gaillard Center on Wednesday and Thursday um, with no competing programming. And then on Friday, they will be in the Carolina Ballroom in the Francis Marion. So make sure if you're I'm going to attend on Friday. Don't go down to the <laughs> Gellard Center. So, and then we also have right after the plenaries, we have these sessions called Neapolitans. And just like, you know, the ice cream, there's three of them, three options to go to. And these are usually, these are voted on by the, um, um, the committee, uh, program committee and um, Charleston committee to um, what they think will appeal to the most people. And so these were the largest interest um, sessions that they voted on to attend. Then we have concurrent sessions. We have a morning session and then two concurrent afternoon sessions. And these are, you know, particular topics. Um, so uh, another tip is some of the rooms, um, unfortunately, are a little small. So if there's something you want to go to, it's like you have to see it, must see, I would say try to get to that room a little bit early. Uh, just another tip there. And then one of my favorite sessions is the shotgun sessions, where these are like the very quick six minute, 40 second talks where they um, people have to go, they go back to back to back. And then at the end, we have questions and answer times. So if you want to get a lot of information quickly about different topics, um, those are always good sessions. To, and those are included in the concurrence. So you'll see in the concurrent, the program for the concurrence, you'll see shotguns. Also, if you go to the scheduler, you can just type in shotgun and you'll see all of them um, and what, when, what time they are and where they're located. Okay, well, can you describe the plenaries? Oh, plenaries, somebody wants me to describe them a little bit more. These are usually uh, the keynote speakers in the mornings. They are, um, 
general topics that will be covered that cover a lot of, you know, different topics. And um, there, in, there's a list um, Leah's just put up on the website. So the, the other thing that we need to let you know about is the lively lunches. So these are sessions that are, they're not, lunch is not provided, but these are t talks that um, allow time for people to participate. So um, a lot of the topics were, are um, geared to having the audience participate and just not sit there and listen, which is one of the special things about Charleston. Um, you can have a nice conversation with librarians, vendors, and publishers in the same room. And these are one, sometimes one of the best times to have those is during the lively lunches. We do give you time to go and get a lunch and we will be talking about where to go get those um, in a few minutes, but we'll give you time to go get the lunch. You can take your lunch to these sessions and eat during the sessions. So that's what they're, they're about. And then um, the lightning talks are all gonna be on Friday. There's three sessions with 10 minute talks each taking place in the Ma Francis Marion. So there'll be um, about four to five talks in each room. Um, so you might want to look at the schedule to see which ones you want to attend. And these are another quick, fast talk on um, innovation topics and things like that that people have been interested in. So um, is there any uh, questions? I can't, Beth, I can't. This is Leah. I wanted to yeah. say one more thing about the lively lunches. Okay, um, good. We, we sort of shortened the title down. The full title for the session are Lively Lunch Discussions or Lively Lunchtime Discussions. Um, so that the name is a little misleading. So that's why we had to explain about it. But there's, a, like she said, a 30 minute gap to go pick up a lunch, bring it in. You're welcome to bring your food with you. Um, it's very informal. Uh, to sit and, and attend the sessions and participate. Um, but there are a few sessions that do provide lunch that are sponsored. Uh, there's, uh, I believe, four different sponsored luncheons on the schedule this year. Um, so those those that are in a restaurant or the ones that say that they're sponsored by a, a company who's attending, those some of those do provide food. And it's marked on the schedule. It'll say lunch provided if that's one of those sessions. And you um, have to register for that. I yeah, there's an RSVP link on the session, uh, the session description page of the schedule as well. So there's one from ProQuest, one from Ex Libris, uh, Rittenhouse, and EBSCO, I believe. There's four different luncheons this year that do Good. provide lunch. Right. Great. Any other questions before I send this off to our next speaker? Hi again. I'm Heather Staines. Um, kind of, I've uh, been, I've been at to the con conference as a publisher. I've been as a vendor. It's my fifth company. I tell people it's my favorite conference um, to go to. Um, so I'm really excited to to be able to tell you about it. Um, so I just organized two slides in the form of, um, you know, do's and don'ts. So these are kind of um, touch back on on some of the things that have been mentioned before. Um, one of the, the the big tips that I give to my presenters or my friends who are going for the first time is to go into the um, the scheduling uh, program um, and and take a look at who the speakers are ahead of time. Um, so you, there may be somebody you've always wanted to meet or, or someone from a company that you really need to get in touch with. So looking and see who who is on the program as a presenter is one way to do that. It's also um, possible if people have signed up for a session and, and they've agreed you know to have their 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 picture or their their name shown you can see who else um, might be there i noticed that people were signing up for the continental breakfast and such so it's a it's a good way to get a little bit of um overview of of who might be where so i encourage you to check that out um that said um if there's someone that you really need to talk to um, the conference is big enough and wide ranging enough over several locations that you should probably try to reach out to them ahead of time and see if you can set up, um, you know, if not a special meeting, but at least say, hey, can I can I talk to you after your session? Um, that type of thing. You um, you know, it's it, it, it's it's worthwhile to prove. Um, there's a question about the continental breakfast um, that's included. Um, and the what the vendor um, there's a lunch in the vendor showcase on on Tuesday that's um, that's also included in terms of lunches. 
Um, remember to bring your cards. Um, I sometimes think that business cards can, can be like a little bit passe these days, but if nothing else, um, you know, at the end of the day, you can go through the, the cards you have in your pocket or in your bag and you can remember, you know, who you talked to and, and what you did all day. Um, I find it very useful from that regard. Um, there was a question um, that someone had put in about transportation from the airport. So um, one of the great things about the airport in Charleston is that they have these shared taxi vans. And you can also, if you are in a hurry or you, know, you don't like to hang out with other people, you can get your own taxi. But um, the taxi vans, you know, they, they hold anywhere from, you know, six to to, to 10 people and it's a flat fee uh, per person. And I can't remember exactly what it is, but I wanna say the, the number like $14 or something, you know, stands stands out for me. So it's, um, it's, it's affordable. Um, I have met, you know, many great people in the taxis. It's about a, you know, maybe a 20 to 25 minute ride um, from the airport into the center. And then, you know, if you have some drop offs, so it is a good time to, you know, find out what people are excited about. And I'm actually Facebook friends with some people that I've met in the, in the shared taxis um, over the years. Uh, you can also get, you can also sign up for these shared taxis at many of the hotels to go back. And there's normally one leaving like every hour. Um, and if you, you have to check out of your hotel earlier, you know, you can, um, you can, you can pick one up uh, at a hotel that's near um, you know, the yard center. Um, so it's, it's really, really convenient. Um, I can't stress more um, wear uh, comfortable shoes. Um, there's a question about coming in on the train. I have not done that, so um, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody else who has can can weigh in on that. I believe there is Uber. Um, uh, I One year I went to Charleston. It was my first conference after I was getting over a broken foot, and I can tell you that cobblestones can be unforgiving, so um, not only wear comfortable shoes, but be careful uh, when you're walking. Um, uh, the taxis that travel from downtown, uh, yeah, they, there are taxis at all of the hotels as well. Um, and you know, it, it's really, you shouldn't have a problem, uh, getting around. Um, I will say allow extra time, uh, for getting from, you know, venue to venue. Um, as, as Leah showed, the events are, are spread out a little bit, but you also have to take into consideration, you're going to run into people that, you know, um, on the way. And so you need to, I'm sure they have, um, Lyft as well. Uh, so you need to kind of build in that, um, those unanticipated, uh, questions along the way. So do you know, allow extra time to the degree that you can? Don't, um, sometimes the don'ts are more important than the do's. Um, don't try to meet folks in the lobby of the Francis Marion without being more specific. Um, everyone tries to meet there. Um, so I tend to say by the concierge desk or, you know, by the, um, near the reception or by the piano or something a little bit more specific, um, so that you can, or I'll tell people that I'm have like a big, a big pink bag with me or that I'm wearing a, you know, a red sweater or something like that. Cause it can get pretty busy there. Um, don't expect that you can just run to Starbucks and get a really quick, uh, drink. Um, the Starbucks uh, is really crowded and there will be kind of a long line. You also have to build in extra time because you will run into several people that you know. Um, so you know, account for that. A question? And we do, I was just saying, we also provide coffee uh, in the at the breakfast areas in the morning. Yep. I'm just going to turn off my camera because I think I'm missing the bottom of my slide. Um, uh, don't forget to grab your lunch before the lively lunch. Uh, there's a number of places that we'll be mentioning in, in a second for you to do that. There are places, um, you know, quite near the center um, that have, uh, you know, takeout, really affordable and fast takeout. Um, and be nice to your speakers because the speakers are probably the only ones who can't eat really during the lively lunches. And, you know, we're, we're probably hungry, too. Um, don't be afraid if you see folks, you know, uh, and you want to. Um, you know, you need to tell them something, to, you know, try to grab them because you may not see them again, um, you know, in the same place because it, it is so big and wide ranging. Uh, don't miss um, the reception at the aquarium. Um, definitely for the venue and, and the views um, and the food um, and, and the music, as was mentioned, the dancing, it's fantastic. Um, you can catch the shuttle. You can walk if you want to. I think, as I recall, it takes about, you know, 25, 30 minutes, um, but it's, it's like a straight shot. So it's very easy 
to join a group that's walking. And I also, um, in terms of transportation around the center, if you're in a rush, um, the pedicabs. Um, I met really interesting pedicab um, drivers um, there in Charleston, and they will be able to to get to you around um, in a speedy, you know, and affordable manner. So, um, you know, do uh, try them as an option. You may feel like a little bit embarrassed to be pedaled around, but um, it's a super, uh, super experience because they're all they're always really knowledgeable about the town and they can give, you know, advice on uh, different things to do. So that's it for me. Any over to Chris? All right, I think it's my turn. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the conference's online presence. Um, as, as much as the conference happens in person, we also have a, a pretty strong um, and, and active online life, I would say, also. So um, the conference has um, a, a very active Twitter account, and, and it also picks up a lot during um, the conference. Um, we have a dedicated hashtag. This year it is hashtag CHS17. Um, um, the, um, and this year, for the first year, we have a dedicated social media person. Um, in the past, it's always been kind of done on a volunteer basis, but this year we do have a dedicated social media person. It, she is also a first-time attendee. Um, so um, we also have a Charleston Conference Facebook account, and I've provided links for all of these. Um, we also have a volunteer who runs a conference blog. It's only run during the Charleston conference. Um, Don Hawkins um, is the person that runs it, and he each year um, provides summaries and pictures of um, the uh, sessions that he attends. If you want to go and see past um, blogs, they're all up and available, so you can go back and see the blogs from years past, um, and he will continue to run it. So if there's something that you're interested in seeing that he's perhaps written about, you can go and, and read about those. Um, you can also check out <clears throat> recorded sessions from previous years. So we record sessions each year. Um, and, and those are all available um, online, so those all um, stay up at the URL that I've provided. This year we'll be recording the um, plenary sessions, the Neapolitan sessions, and all of the sessions that are scheduled in the Gay Yard Grand Ballrooms 1, 2, and 3. So, um, you know, if you have conf conflicts in your schedule and you know that that there's going to be um, a session in one of those rooms, you can kind of um, plan on those are going to be pre-recorded and you can come back and watch them later. Um, so um, it, I highly encourage you, um, I don't, if you're, even if you're not a um, Twitter user to kind of tune in and check out the Charleston Conference Twitter account. There's a lot of interesting and provocative conversations that, that happen um, on, on Twitter kind of as a result of the conference. All right. Um, now, there's been lots of questions. I've seen them coming through about food, so I'm going to talk a little <laughs> bit about we and we've talked a little bit about this already. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the food stuff, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the local restaurants. Um, as we've talked about before, there's a continental breakfast provided every day, and that's part of your um, registration. So your registration free it covers the um, continental breakfast. Um, there are um, lunches are not included, but there is a, a 30 minute break where you can go out and I'm going to talk about a couple of places where you can go and pick up lunch and then bring it back into the conference sessions. Um, there um, are a couple of conference events that will provide food. Um, those include um, the vendor showcase. There will be snacks um, and food provided at the vendor showcase. The first timer reception, um, well, there will be um, some hors d'oeuvres provided at those. I think Leah mentioned that earlier. Um, the um, uh, reception at the aquarium includes dinner as well. There's uh, well hors d'oeuvres at their heavy hors d'oeuvres at the um, aquarium will be provided. So there's always some, some snacks there and that's always a lot of fun. 
Um, and then Thursday evening, we've talked about there's the dine arounds, which are great um, networking opportunities. I've included the link here. It's kind of an unwieldy URL, but um, that link is also available on the Charleston Conference website. So if you want to RSVP for one of the Thursday night dine arounds, um, those are um, um, allocated. So some of the restaurants, there's I think there's like nine different dine arounds available. Um, the, oh, oh, somebody is asking about the cost. It kind of varies. The cost of the dine arounds vary depending upon where you end up. So you end up paying for your meal, I think, at the restaurants where you go. Um, so it, it does vary. But yeah, I think a $60, $60 is, a, is about average. Um, so you submit a list of restaurants that you're ended up in, interested in, and they will kind of allot you um, <laughs> snacks. That's true. There's a lot of food available at the aquarium. Um, so um, at any rate, if you're interested in the dine arounds, you'll want to pre-register. And um, if you get to the conference um, and you're interested in the dine arounds, they, there's always a couple of spaces available, but you'll do better um, to register beforehand. Okay. Um, moving on, good places to eat. And these are just a couple of examples. Um, for the um, lunches, during the conference, um, the Black Bean and Company is is within walking distance of, um, and these are, the, I, I tried to kind of include on this slide, lo places local or um, local to Charleston, not necessarily chain restaurants. Um, Black Bean and Company is kind of a, a local um, um eatery to Charleston. Um, it's just up the road, just a block away from the Francis Marion Hotel. Um, and it, it's always really great. It's a lot of natural um, and organic foods. Um, there's also within walking distance, um, there's a, if you're interested in more chain type restaurants, there's a kick and chicken restaurants, there's a Moe's, there's a pizza place, there's an excellent Greek place that has euros. It's, it's literally a hole in the wall down King Street. Um, I have never, um, Heather is the one that recommended caviar and bananas. I've never eaten there. Um, um, but it, she says it has choose your own salad options and that sounds fantastic. Um, I put Saffron Restaurant and Bakery on here. Um, it is closer to the Gayard Center, um, and it includes, um, uh, Middle Eastern food. It's a Middle Eastern restaurant and bakery, and it sounds fantastic, and it got excellent reviews on Google. Um, I've never eaten there before, but it is on my list to try this year. Um, Justine's Kitchen is down, um, I think it's down Meeting. It's either on Meeting or Market, but I think it's down Meeting, and it is really good, and it's classic, like, Southern fare. Um, fried okra and grits, and, um, you know, um, chicken and um, it is delicious food. It's fantastic. It's a little bit further away from the conference venues, but it is worth the walk. They have amazing biscuits and, and stuff like that. Um, Pugin's Porch, which is the one on the lines I've listed here, is it's a dinner venue. It is um, a, a kind of more expensive type venue, but it is worth the, the walk. Um, it is uh, it's a little bit, it is further away. It might be one of those places that you might try and get a, a pedicab to. Um, but it is, it is really fantastic. It is um, a, a fancier restaurant, but it is, it is uh, one of my favorite places to eat in Charleston. Um, there are all kinds of places. I highly recommend if you're looking for recommendations that you check with the concierge also at your hotels. Um, the Francis Marion um, concierge is really great about providing recommendations um, and they can provide you with, with other ideas as well. Just up the block from the Francis Marion is a, is a place called Virginia's on King um, that has a um, uh, some of, I think, the best shrimp and grits in um, Charleston. It's one of my favorite places to go while I'm in town. Um, I'll be having breakfast there on Wednesday if anybody wants to come. And um, uh, so there's there's all kinds of places to eat that are within walking distance. This is really just a sampling of some of the places um, in downtown Charleston.
Okay, and I have moved on to the next slide. I'm going to turn it over at this point in time to the next person. So I'll take this one. Uh, this is just, we asked a few people to give us a, a comment about what they thought a long time attendees would um, want to tell somebody. And I really like the one that we got that um, there are so many great sessions and you know you can't get to everything. So you can always follow up with the presenters because we'll, they'll have that their contact information. And also, um, you can we will have the proceedings available later in the year when they're completed and they'll be online free for you to look at. You can always go back and look at those that way. That's what I plan to do. Um, I do that a lot. And Sabatino's is right across the street on um, uh, Calhoun, and it's one of the best places to get pizza per one of our our people. And um, there's just to let you know that. There are some the restaurants that are in the hotels. They might be able to do you a takeout for you if you need to. Um, but uh, you can check with them about that for, for more food information. <laughs> um, and so now we're going to um, let you know there are several different places to get um, information during the conference. Um, there's the uh, the Big Geller Center has will have an information desk in the lobby on the in Francis Marion. It'll be on the mezzanine level, which will be the second level up from the, the big lobby. And then the courtyard and embassy suites. Look for people that have a Charleston conference shirt on. And they're usually uh, sitting, especially in the courtyard, they're sitting right um, when you walk in so you can find them. And if they can't answer the question, they will get the answer for you. So, okay, um, we still have a little bit of time. So are there any other questions that we did not get to that we might need to go back to? Is it still possible to register for a pre-conference? Yes, um, online registration is closed right now. The website is down so that we'll give our staff time to get the badges printed and everything. Uh, but Dylan, if you uh, will go by that registration check-in desk when you arrive and uh, talk to them and tell them you want to add a pre-conference, they can handle it for you. Um, let's see here, what else? Distant hotel, ideas on best places to chill. Who wants to take that one? Well, I was going to say I um, the courtyard, even though it's got people coming in and out, it's pretty big um, and you could, there's little places in the lobby where you can sit at. Also, they have a little outside area if it's a pretty day. Um, anybody else? I mean, the lobbies of any of the hotels, they'll probably be, you know, attendees kind of just to sitting around in the same yep. same position if, if their hotels are far out. Um, the Gaillard Center um, does have some um, couches, um, you know, you have to look for them a little bit. And then there's some chairs um, and tables on the on the first floor. Um, you'll find people, you know, in, you know, the, the coffee shops along the road, too. Yeah. Okay, I so would also add that the College of Charleston Library, Adelstone Library, is just sure. down. So if you don't want to hang out at a hotel, um, you could always walk down and, and hang out at the College of Charleston Library. And I think there's a Starbucks going Starbucks going down that way too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's actually a really fantastic, um, if it's still there, there's a really great coffee place that sits between the Francis Marion and Adelstone. It's on the right hand side of the road. So you could you could walk from the Francis Marion, get some coffee and go into Adelstone. I uh, saw somebody earlier mentioned shuttle service for Mount Pleasant, never saw their presence last year. Um, that because that one is a little further out, the time between the shuttles is a, a longer wait a lot of times. Um, we've got three different vans that run a loop. Um, so they're supposed to be, you know, every, I would say roughly every 20 minutes, but we can't make a guarantee. Traffic on the bridge is unpredictable going across to Mount Pleasant. Um, 
I will, um, there's a link on the website there for Julian's Transportation Service. That's the company that runs the shuttles. Um, and his phone number is actually listed on that website, his cell phone number. And he said, feel free to call him um, if you're not seeing a shuttle and they'll send somebody um, and let you know the kind of estimated time of arrival for the next shuttle to be, to be there. Um, but it is, it is a longer wait at Mount Pleasant. So I apologize if that, uh, if you didn't see them last year. Um, there, Sarah Green has a, a question about the beach. I would say, <laughs> I would say I'm looking at the forecast now. It looks like um, it's going to be like 80s for Monday and Tuesday, and then gets a little chillier on Wednesday. But, um, but you know, that can change quickly. So um, just keep an eye on that. Just, um, but I would say I typically try to go to the beach while I'm there. Um, if I have time, I, um, I enjoy going down there because it's just, they're nice and quiet at this time of year. Yeah. Like Heather said, it depends on where you're from. It's too cold for me to swim that time of year. My husband grew up in Michigan and he jumps in every time. <laughs> so it just depends on, on you. Um, let's see, should we try to pre-order lunches? Um, what do y'all think about that? I, I don't really think it's necessary. There's so many options. You don't want to lock yeah. yourself in advance. I, I would say that you'll have, there'll be plenty of options. So. Um, one I, question. I, agree. I also think it's difficult sometimes, um, when you're, when you're unfamiliar with a place and it's menu to pre-order a lunch. Um, a question that came up w w from one of my presenters the other day, which I couldn't answer because I've never taken my kids is other than the aquarium, what are there, what fun things are there for kids to do? So if you guys could suggest that. Yes. <laughs> we said that they're taking um, the families. Mine are older now, so they don't really enjoy this anymore, but there's a really great kids museum, a children's museum that's just down from the Francis Marion off of John street. Um, Let's see here. What else? There's tons of other historical type museums around um, if your kids are older and <laughs> would enjoy a more educational approach. But the, the Children's Museum, if you've got younger ones, is great. The aquarium's great. And just walking downtown, there's a waterfront park where there's um, nice swings looking out over the harbor. Um, there, if the weather's nice, there's a pineapple, the pineapple fountain that's in all the pictures at Charleston. Uh, it's got a little waiting area that kids can splash in. Um, if you have a car, there's a ba the battleship. In Mount I, I have to. It, this isn't necessarily related to children, but I have to mention that if you are end up staying over until Saturday morning, um, on Saturday morning, um, out on the square, there is a fantastic um, farmers market that where there's excellent vendors that come out with. Um, um, food. There's there's a great crepe stand, delicious coffee, but also a lot of local vendors. Um, there's there's okay. usually people out there with their dogs. Um, it's a lot of fun. So if you stay over until Saturday, um, it, that farmer's market on the square is really worth going to. There's a question about what are the little red numbers on, on shed and I just I hadn't noticed them before. Um, so maybe that's what they it's are. Chance. If you if you've got your personal account set up where it's connected to your Facebook account, your Twitter, LinkedIn, anytime somebody you're connected to on those social media um, accounts, if they mark that they're attending a session, it'll let you know that you've got a friend who's gonna be there. So it's kind of I think that's a new option because I just noticed it this year for the first time too. So if you've got uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, um, and you're friends with somebody there and they're also attending a session on the schedule, it'll let you know. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so the poster sessions are definitely times where you will learn a lot from all your colleagues that are doing great work um, and showing their stuff off on their posters, but also just a good time to talk to that person, especially if it's something that you're interested in um, learning more about. Mm -hmm. And we're having just uh, not only the print, like traditional poster posters, we've got mm -hmm. what we call the virtual posters this year. So we've got six large flat screen kiosks with iPads attached. And the app, it's um, is really cool. It's kind of like Netflix where you can scroll through different categories with keywords and they'll have thumbnails of the poster. And you can pick which one you want to look at, tap it, and it zooms 
in. So it blows the poster up on the big screen. You can kind of move it around, zoom in uh, to read, read the small print. Um, and it's going to have a short video to go along with it to narrate the poster. So that's going to be there in addition to the print posters where the presenters will be there. You can visit and ask them questions and hear about their research and their projects. I just wanted to say um, in terms of the posters and in terms of many of the presenters, um, the Charleston Conference, because we do have a wide array of programming, offers people who maybe haven't ever presented at a conference before an opportunity to present. So, you know, when you do go to the posters and you are in sessions, you know, think about if you've not presented before, maybe next year it may be a venue for you and, you know, be really supportive. Some, some people may be nervous there because it might be their first presentation. So. Yeah, that's a really good point, Heather. We've actually got some students too, some MLIS students that are presenting posters. So uh, be supportive of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we will um, kind of wrap things up here. We're going to have a recording of this that's going to be available on the conference website. Thank everyone for being here. Thanks to our presenters for answering questions and talking with everyone. Um, if you have any other questions, you can email us. Um, there's uh, info at charlestonlibraryconference.com, or you can email me directly. Mine's Leah at charlestonlibraryconference.com, L-E-A-H at charlestonlibraryconference.com. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you guys next week. So yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. You Thank you. you were on the webinar. Yes. Let us know. We'd love to meet you. Thanks. That's right. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.